morning. Welcome everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today for today's Memorial Day ceremony. My name is Sophie Schneider, and I'm this year's Master of Ceremonies. Today is dedicated to those brave men and women of the U.S. Armed Forces who gave their lives to ensure the freedom of this great nation. It is important to recognize the unthinkable sacrifice they made so that the memory of these brave men and women live on. With the help of writer Susan Smith, I would like to read a poem to express my thankfulness. To all our veterans, far and near, we thank you for your service for all those years. You sacrificed your time and some gave your life. You preserved our freedom by willingly paying the price. Many of you were sent overseas. You were wounded in battles with scars and disease. But courageous and brave, you weathered the storm you braved every battle with faith and beyond. So no one stands alone, we walk hand in hand. Remember, we are with you, together we shall stand. On this Memorial Day, let us express our love and thanks for the sacrifice you paid, you served in honor for many years and days, and we will never forget how you were strong and brave. Now, the Hopkinton High School Band, conducted by Craig Hay, will perform America the Beautiful. Thank you. Melvin, chaplain with Ho um, Brookhaven Hospice, to give the invocation. Let us pray. Holy and almighty God, creator of every people and place, ruler of all the nations, we gather here before you humbly and thankfully glad of your presence amongst us. And together we acknowledge that apart from you, we can do nothing and that we need your constant grace and mercy as we seek to live in peace with those near and those far. And this morning, we thank you for the many who throughout the years have given all so that we might continue to live freely. Men and women from communities large and small, from city and country, of every race and religion, who made the ultimate sacrifice in the service of their country 
and who made it possible for us to openly gather today. We honor them for their willingness to give so that others may live, for their selflessness and commitment to duty regardless of the cost. O oh Lord, may their actions be spurs to us and generations to come to live lives that are focused on giving for the sake of others and their benefit. And we also thank you this day for those who gave themselves to serve and defend our land and are still with us, veterans who fought on foreign soil alongside comrades who died. We honor them for all that they have done and for all that they continue to do to keep us all mindful of the many benefits we enjoy as citizens of this country. And we pray for the men and women who currently serve in the many branches of military service, wherever they may be, in places of conflict or on the ready to go wherever needed. Bless them, bless their families, keep them safe, keep them diligent. May they serve well wherever, wherever duty may call them. And so now, God of the universe, Lord of time and space, come upon us. Give us hearts of gratitude for the sacrifices made on our behalf. Move us and strengthen us to live so that the ideals we hold forth might be seen in us. May those who speak to us this day inspire within us a new commitment to seek peace. And we look forward in faith to that day when there will be war no more. And we ask all this in your name. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Melvin. We will now stand by for the placing of the wreaths done by the American Legion and the Scouts. Next, please welcome Mia Catino, who will be giving the Gettysburg Address. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives so that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far beyond our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead, we take increased de devotion to that cause for which they gave their last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall have not died in vain. That this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom. And that government, of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Thank you. Please welcome Hopkinton Chairman of Selectin, John Catino, give his remarks. Thank you very much. 
we're holding off the rain and it's cold so I'll be short. I first want to thank God for holding off the rain and making the forecasters wrong again, allowing us the privilege of visiting each of the cemeteries and then sitting in our beautiful common and the, and the gazebo. I'd also like to thank the Veterans Committee, especially Mike Whalen for planning and delivering this event every year, Colonel Wilkinson and all the veterans for your service. Thank you very much. Over the past few months during the campaign season, I heard people say repeatedly that Hopkinton's changed. It's not the same. It doesn't feel right. It's lost its appeal. To that I say, I think they're wrong. I believe the reasons that people are moving here now are the same reasons I moved here 20 years ago. Today, people are still hoping to be part of this vibrant, accepting, and generous community. These qualities are ev evident in gatherings like this. The respect, the reverence, and the love of community that I witnessed here today and every Memorial Day here in Hopkinton remind me of how proud I am to be part of this nation and this very town. As many of you know, I've always said that this is my favorite day in Hopkinton because this is Hopkinton. Some people say it's the marathon, but this is Hopkinton. You've heard us said before, we could all be somewhere else. On a long holiday weekend, sleeping late, fishing, enjoying a brunch. However, it is so wonderful that we continue to gather this one day and show our appreciation for those who have fought and those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in the service of our country allowing us to live and enjoy the other 365 day, 64 days of the year. Yet we also must show appreciation and give thanks to our parents, relatives, teachers, and mentors for instilling in us the importance of showing such respect for this solemn day. Today represents the fabric of our town, our commonwealth, and our nation. And this setting should remind us of how very important it is that we continue to instill this commitment in our children so that in another 20 years, the same community spirit will bring families to Hopkinton and generations together in awe, respect, and admiration on this day. Thank you very much, and may God bless. We will now have the Hopkinton High School Band play God Bless America. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Jim Morabli. I'm the vice chairman of your town's Veterans Celebration Committee. And part of my duties, I get the pleasure of introducing our guest speaker every year. And today we have uh, Lieutenant Colonel Brandon Wilkerson from Hanscom Air Force Base. Uh, before I introduce uh, the Colonel, I would like to recognize his family. Uh, colonel Wilkinson is joined today by his wife of 16 years, Angela, and their three children. Ann, Claire, and Evan. Uh, Angela is originally from Albuquerque, New Mexico, and she's been a drug and alcohol counselor, a college counselor instructor, and a stay-at-home mom, 
and has just finished her master's degree in school psychology. As a military family, they've lived in 11 different homes, covering nine different duty assignments. So please help me in uh, thanking uh, Angela and her children today. Sorry to embarrass you, but if you could just wave. Thank you for all you do. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Brandon L. Wilkerson is the Chief Developmental Tester for the Joint Surveillance and Target Attack Radar Systems Recapitalization Program. He is responsible for leading a 60-member integrated test team in planning and conducting the JSTARS recapitalization test program. He was commissioned in 1996 as a distinguished graduate from the United States Air Force Academy. He began his career as a spacecraft engineer developing and operating research satellites. After attending the United States Air Force Test Pilot School, he was the lead flight test engineer for the C-130J aircraft. He was then selected for the Engineering and Scientist Exchange Program and performed laser communication research at the German Aerospace Center near Munich, Germany. Lieutenant Colonel Wilkinson then served in the Pentagon as an operations officer on the Joint Staff and in the Air Force Legislative Liaison Office. He also served on the Headquarters Air Force Staff as the Program Element Monitor and Branch Chief for the MQ-1 Predator and MQ-9 Reaper programs and as the Deputy Division Chief for the $16 billion acquisition portfolio of 27 Command and Control and Combat Support programs. Lieutenant Colonel Wilkinson then commanded the 46 Test Squadron, leading 500 personnel in test and evaluation of over 300 Command and Control, Communications, Computers Intelligence, Surveillance and Reconnaissance Systems for Air Force Joint and Multinational Users. His major awards and decorations include the Meritorious Service Medal with four Oak Leaf Clusters, Aerial Achievement Medal with Oak Leaf Cluster, Air Force Commendation Medal with Oak Leaf Cluster, and the Air Force Achievement Medal with Oak Leaf Cluster. Please join me in welcoming Lieutenant Colonel Brendan L. Wilkerson. General John Logan, May 5th, 1868. Attention to orders. The 30th day of May, 1868, is de designated for the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country and whose bodies now lie in almost every city, village, and hamlet churchyard in the land. We cherish tenderly the memory of our heroic dead. We should guard their graves with sacred vigilance. Let no ravages of time testify to the presence that we have forgotten as a people the cost of a free and undivided republic. Let us raise above them the dear old flag they saved from dishonor. Let us in this solemn presence renew our pledges to aid and assist those whom they have left among us, the soldiers and sailors, widow and orphan. With that order, General John Logan, National Commander of the Grand Army of the Republic, established May 30th as the first Decoration Day, what we now call Memorial Day. Select Catino, Jim, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for inviting me and my family to participate in today's ceremony. We are honored to represent Hanscom Air Force Base and the 1.4 million soldiers, sailors, Marines, airmen, and Coast Guardmen who today carry on the proud tradition of serving our great nation. My wife and I grew up in the Rocky Mountains, so an assignment in New England has been a unique opportunity for us. We found so much history, pride, and tradition in these small New England towns. We feel privileged to be included in one of your special traditions. You know, our lives can be so hectic that it's easy to see Memorial Day as the end of the school year, the beginning of summer, or a chance for an extended getaway. I'm slightly ashamed to admit that as a child, the significance of Memorial Day was that it marked the opening of the neighborhood pool. So I would like to sincerely thank each one of you for being here today. You've taken time out of your busy lives to honor and remember our servicemen and women who answered America's call and paid the ultimate price. You honor them with your presence. I would like to acknowledge any Gold Star family members in attendance today 
we are so sorry for your loss. I know there are many veterans in attendance today as well. I would also like to take a moment and acknowledge you and your honorable service to the country. Thank you. I think there's room this weekend for both leisure and remembrance. The key is to remember the why. Why today is a national holiday. Today we stand together to commemorate the sacrifices of American military men and women who have laid down their lives in service to this nation. It is worthy to reflect for a few moments on how we as a nation came to observe Memorial Day. The observance of this day was born of compassion and empathy in the midst of the horror and destruction of the Civil War. As the Civil War raged, grieving mothers, wives, and loved ones tended to graves of fallen soldiers. Soon, the tradition of a decoration day for the graves of fallen soldiers spread. After the war in 1866, shopkeepers in Waterloo, New York, closed their shops for a day to honor all soldiers killed in the Civil War, Union and Confederate alike. It was a gesture of healing and reconciliation in a land ripped apart by conflict. General Logan proclaimed May 30th as Decoration Day in 1868, and 14 years later in 1882, the nation observed its first Memorial Day. It's hard to fathom the depth of the suffering during the Civil War. Nearly 500,000 service members died during the war. That was about one and a half percent of the total U.S. population. So Memorial Day was born out of this great national suffering and a desire to honor the dead. Civil War veterans and loved ones of the deceased feared that future generations might forget the significance of this day as the bravery, honor, and sacrifice of these men faded from memory. Yet today, 150 years later, we still hold this day sacred and we remember. We remember more than one million American service members who died in the wars and conflicts that this nation fought since the first colonial soldiers took up arms in 1775 to fight for independence. Across our nation this Memorial Day, our citizens and veterans gather to pay homage to America's finest men and women who laid down their lives in defense of freedom. We honor those who gave what Abraham Lincoln called the last full measure of devotion in the fight for our liberty and our ideals. Each person who died during those conflicts was a loved one, cherished by family and friends. Each was a loss to their community and to the nation. Sadly, your beautiful town was not left unaffected by war and conflict. The memorials that surround us here on the Hopkinton Common are a stark reminder of the loss felt by communities. Memorials stand to commemorate the fallen, but they also stand to comfort those who have lost a friend or a loved one. For one of the most painful scars of war is inflicted not on the veteran, but on the people who love that veteran. Lieutenant John Wickersham, a 28-year-old doughboy, probably not too different than the one who marches on this common, understood the anguish that loved ones felt. The final stanza of his poem, The Raindrops on Your Old Tin Hat, reads, and fellows, She's the hero of this great, big, ugly war, and her prayer is on the wind across the flat. And don't you reckon maybe it's her tears and not the rain that's keeping up the patter on your old tin hat? On September 12, 1918, a day after he wrote that poem, Lieutenant Wickersham was wounded by an explosion during the St. Mihiel Offensive in France. He ignored his injuries to attend to those of another. Without medical treatment, he led his platoon in the next advance where he fired his weapon with his left hand as his right had been rendered useless. He collapsed from blood loss and died on the battlefield. For his gallantry, he was posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor. His poem was about mothers, but it could just as easily have described the heartache of a wife, daughter, or sister. It could have easily described the anguish of a father, son, brother, or husband. Our Hanscom Air Force Base community has also suffered loss. Less than two years ago, two of our young Security Forces Airmen, Senior Airman Nathan Sartain and Airman First Class Casey Ruiz, died in Afghanistan. These defenders were performing flyaway security team missions, meaning they flew on aircraft to protect the aircraft, aircrew, 
passengers, and cargo as the aircraft flew throughout the theater of operations. On October 2nd, 2015, their aircraft crashed shortly after takeoff, killing Nathan, Casey, and nine other people on board. Over a thousand of us at Hanscom Air Force Base gathered afterwards to grieve with their families, and we continue to hold them close in our hearts. In remembrance of all these fallen heroes, please join me in a moment of silence. Today is a solemn day of remembrance, a day that should be properly set aside for contemplation. In traditional observance, the flag of the United States is raised briskly to the top of the staff and then solemnly lowered to the half-staff position, where it remains only until noon. The half-staff position remembers the men and women who gave their lives in service to this country. At noon, the flag is then raised to full staff for the remainder of the day in honor of the nation's heroes. I'd also like to think that the raising of the flag is a symbol of hope. Even as we mourn the loss of so many fine men and women, we know that their sacrifice was not in vain. We can celebrate their courage, dedication, and their sacrifice. We can celebrate their love of country, love of family, and love of their fellow soldier. We can celebrate the ideals they fought to advance, freedom, liberty, and justice. This sentiment is perhaps best expressed by Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr., Civil War veteran and Supreme Court Justice. In 1884, just 75 miles northwest of here in Keene, New Hampshire, he concluded what is perhaps the most poignant Memorial Day speech ever, saying, but grief is not the end of all. I seem to hear the funeral march become a song of triumph. I see beyond the forest the moving banners of a hidden column. Our dead brothers still live for us and bid us think of life, not death. As I listen, the great chorus of life and joy begins again, and our trumpets sound once more a note of daring, hope, and will. Ladies and gentlemen, as we raise the flag at noon, let us too think of life, not death. Let us be thankful that their sacrifice has made our lives better. Let their courage and dedication inspire us to live our lives well. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Wilkerson. Um, we will now have our final gun salute, followed by the playing of taps by Hoffington High School trumpetist Tristan Clark and Ryan Branch. <coughs>
Now please join as the Hawkinson High School Band plays the national anthem and the flag is raised. Now welcome the Girl Scouts to give the salute to the flag. Now please stand by for the placing of the wreath done by the American Legion and the Scouts. We will now have Hopkinton High School sophomore Tess Papagni recite the Gettysburg Address. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We come to dedicate a portion of it as a final resting place for those who died here, that the nation might live. This we may in all propriety do. Um, but in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have hallowed it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, while it can never forget what they did here. It is rather for us, the living, we here be dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they here gave the last full measure of devotion, that we take, that we here, um, um, give the, that we here highly resolve these dead shall not have died in vain, that the nation shall have a new birth of freedom, and that the government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not have died in vain. Thank you. We will now have Reverend 
um, Robert Coutier from Faith Community Church um, recite a prayer. Good morning. It's a real privilege as a Christian minister in the town of Hopkinton to be invited to offer a prayer on Memorial Day. I've done it for a number of years and it really is a highlight for me. So thank you for the invitation. And as we're at the beginning of uh, the summer season, although it does feel like fall today, does it not? <laughs> yes. So I invite you to join me in your hearts if you'd like to as I, as I lead us in prayer. So let's pray. Our Father, today most of us have the day off from work to spend time with family, fire up the grill, and simply relax. But the members of our armed forces are working hard today to ensure that we have long weekends in our future. Today is a day to stop and solemnly remember that since the founding of our great nation, more than one million Americans have died in the service of their country. These brave men and women made the ultimate sacrifice in defense of freedom, liberty, and the values that make our nation great. In the quiet of your hearts, if you would like to, please speak their names. Since the end of the Civil War, we have celebrated Memorial Day, remembering those who have paid and are paying the price to protect us. We thank them and their families for the sacrifice they have endured. But today we also thank you, Lord, to the extent that we have mostly experienced tranquility in this past year. This is ultimately your doing. Nobody really knows what threats were averted or what would have happened if you had removed your hand from us, thank you for protecting us. Lord, in this challenging age, we now all have a responsibility to be vigilant to protect one another. Please make us aware and give us courage to live this out. Help us to be truly one nation under God with liberty and justice for all. And I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Um, thank you, Reverend. We will now have a gun salute done by the Old Guard New England, followed by the playing of taps by Hopkinton High School trumpetists. After, we will proceed to the Hopkinton Common. everyone for coming and now we will head to the Hawkington Common.